Stories Podcast, your number one show for everything guitar. Hey, everybody! Hello! Can you hear us? Can you see us? Can you hear Dan? Does it work? I, I have no idea, but, um, you know. Boom! <laughs> we're here. We're live. It's a miracle we're here. It truly is a miracle we're here, people. Um, we we've been trying so many different tech things to this this past week, and nothing's working. And tonight we've got a very special guest, and I don't want to let her down. So we've gone back to regular old Skype to um to make sure it works. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Um, Nicole Millick is in the chat. In case you don't know who the guest is this evening, it is the one and only Nicole Millick um, from Deutschland, Dan. Yeah, so we got to do it in German then? Yeah, sure. Good. Actually, I, yeah, good. Sehr gut. Oi vey. <laughs> I have to do it in Austrian, which is which is uh, totally different. Um, welcome to everybody who is currently with us in the podcast live on YouTube. Hello. And also, hello to everyone who's listening in the podcast. It's good to have you back, guys. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, have you had a good week, Dan? Yeah, but I was so angry. I was so mad. Oh no! Why? Because nobody, and I say nobody, sent a single picture of his guitar. Yeah, we were going to address this pretty early on in the podcast. I had no idea <laughs> that it was going to upset Dan so much, but. We asked you last week. I need some sad music for this. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for a D minor. Okay. The, the saddest of all chords. And all keys. Nobody sent us any photo. Of their guitars on Instagram. And I can't hear my guitar when I've got these headphones in. <laughs> yeah, we we wanted photos so we could show your guitars. Thank you very much. At the um, at the beginning of the show, and nobody sent any. How dare you? How dare you? I mean, we show up here. Uh, uh, we show up here on time every week. Top quality entertainment, and you guys can't even send any photos in. <laughs> yeah so I mean, take the guitar stars podcast or take andy or take me or take three of us but you can you can stick them to a pigeon and throw it up in the air as far as i'm concerned as long as it gets to us i don't mind <laughs> well I'm, I'm done i'm done blaming people it's not really fair but if you are listening in podcast world guitar stories podcast on instagram tag us and we will show your guitar on the YouTube version of the podcast that you won't be able to see because you're listening on, on iTunes or whatever. <laughs> and if you don't use Instagram, you just send an email to guitarstoriespodcast at gmail.com. Mm, yeah, see, Dale doesn't. Dale's in the chat. He doesn't use Instagram. Um, apparently, we're having oh, a few, a few uh, a tech issues. Screen is lagging. I don't know what that is if you're watching. And um, I am super excited about having Nicole on the show tonight, Dan. Oh yeah, me too. She is going to perform her latest single for us. Did you know? I think you told me, but I had forgotten about that, and I think it's even more exciting because we've never had that before. Never a world's first. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm super excited. Um, we've had a rather a week of it. Um, excuse me, sorry. I'm, I'm. You know when the the radio DJ just runs into the studio at the last minute, plugs his headphones in, and that. That's that's how I feel today, you know. And then I like, whoa, and then he's super cool, but not that bit. But <laughs> we normally have we've got new new video stings and everything this week. What we don't have, um no, hang on, let me rephrase that. Let me somehow spin this. Okay, Dan, I got it. I got it. Okay. This week's episode is a theater of the mind. Ooh. Which is code to say we don't have any photos of the news we're going to be talking about. <laughs> so imagine with us go on a journey with us through space and time um yeah uh poo ninja says he sent a promo post to pick to andy for this episode i did not get that poo 
You know um, why, Andy? I think everyone was so busy photoshopping your profile pic on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen um, my my profile pic on Facebook, I, I posted some stuff on Instagram, and all I wanted to do, Dan, was post a nice photo because you know I've got some website updates and things, and I thought I've got the cameras always set up. I'll just sort of stand still and press the button. <laughs> And I thought I, I made what I thought was a perfectly nice photo, something you know that my mum would say, "Oh, that's lovely." And then people just started photoshopping it with other things on there. <laughs> and I am <laughs> daily updating my profile picture because there are some crackers. They're, they're so funny. <laughs> what um, was your What was your favorite so far? The Henning uh, one. Henning's too What's scary. I quite like okay. Chewbacca, but as you pointed out, the glasses are off center of the face, which I, I don't like. Um, yeah. it just it upsets me. I think I like the one that was, um, I think my friend Graham copied my hair and pasted the hair all over the screen. So it's just hair <laughs> and eyes and lips. Um, <laughs> yeah. So the pro taking over. <laughs> he, he's a legend when it comes to, to Photoshop and stuff. Awesome. <laughs> so, um, oh, hang on. It's Pooh Ninja. Thank you, Pooh. He's just... Oh my goodness. Oh no, that's, that's you, Dan. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, all right. Well, I, I, I'm going to try and get that picture on the screen later, Poo Ninja. Thank you for sending me that. Um, I, I'm just try. Let's, let's get into some news. I know you've got some news, Dan, which is um, kind of business news, isn't it? Do you want to do that one today? Yep. All right, then. In Pretty that sure. case, it's time. hang on, wait a minute. There's someone in the chat called Baby Yoda. No way. Grogu, you're here? Baby Yoda's here. Oh, I, uh, I, got a fr I got a friend that's uh, oh. looking for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, you mean the world to him and all that stuff. Guitar news! <laughs> Our news of the awesome. week. That was dramatic, wasn't it? Yeah. So, Dan, um, can you lead with this? Because I... I'm not intelligent enough to understand what you sent me earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I blagged my way through it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, you may need to explain that. Yeah, we, I think we, we chatted earlier about uh, Behringer, or how they, call, how they call the company now, Music Tribe. They decided to stop selling to mom and pop stores. And it was pretty interesting to see the press release that they did. And Uli Behringer, he had a couple statements that... Uh, well, we already discussed a little bit internally because uh, at some point they are making sense. At some point, there's there's quite some, uh, I should put it, uh, controversy, uh, controversy to it. So um, that was that was kind of interesting to to see. So, but what what is about? So basically, um, I think a week ago already they sent out a press release that stated that they wanted to improve their business and ubiquity of products, etc. So uh, they were restructuring their business model and only selling to a couple of what they called super partners. So they want to do a factory direct sales model and uh, go with the super partners. So um, was that already something where, where you raised an eyebrow, Andy? Or I don't know. What was your, what your take when you read that? Um, I mean, how, how, would you, how would you define a super partner? Someone that's guaranteed to make Behringer more money. And, <laughs> and what I mean by it is not necessarily selling more products, but streamlining their process. So Behringer is all about, if I understand it correctly, um, stripping things back, making things as cheaply as possible, and yep. really cutting down the work that goes into building a product, um, <laughs> and including the release, you know, and, and the uh, and as a YouTuber, they don't work with YouTubers, for example, they don't promote their stuff like many other brands do, which of course irks me. But um, it works for them, and uh, I, I, they're just trying to decrease the number of steps between when they spend money to produce a product to when they get money to be paid for that product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this seems like another step. It sounds like they've sat down and just looked at their business model and said, "Well, why are we sending to all these places when these superpowers, sorry, super partners, are um, selling <laughs> our main?" Uh, our main um, our main salespeople. So just cut out the people who are doing little bits and bobs and, and concentrate mm -hmm. on the big guys. And yeah. 
of course I think it's evil, but also I think it's rather clever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean the main the main like the the quintessential part of the overall paragraph was basically that they stated as a consequence it unfortunately it disqualifies all small brick and mortar stores and traditional distributors, yeah. which is quite a paradigm shift for their sales model and also quite a boost of the whole consolidation of the market that we see anyways, you know, with smaller dealers. And we, we've just, we're, we're about to go into lockdown tomorrow. Oh. So what does it mean? Yeah. What does that mean for the small mom and papa sh uh, shop? You know, they're basically sending home their sales force and uh, they got to see how they survive. It's a, it's a little a rather difficult because to me accessibility of product is not necessarily ubiquity. You know, you can have like if if we're talking about the, let's call them superpowers because I like the term. If we're talking about like a handful of superpowers within Europe or even in the world, you're limiting your your channel. I mean, you're having a lot of economies of of, of sale, but you're very limited when it comes to the channel. You can't go to a you know the store next in the next town and and just grab a Behringer pedal then. So yeah. that's quite a yeah, like I said, it's quite quite a significant shift from, from the business model, and ultimately, I don't know how it will turn out for them. It's it's probably something that's that's rather clever because they are very cost sensitive. Yes, yes from production like to distribution, but uh, in the long run, it'll be interesting to see if these products can be substituted by other brands. If other brands will jump in and say, "All right, thank you for clearing up the shelves. We'll take that spot." I hadn't thought of I that. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, that's that's interesting. That's super interesting. Um, of course, there are there are now house brands in many different music shops and and other budget and affordable gear. So so maybe that will replace what would have been Behringer. That's that's interesting. I hadn't I hadn't thought of the replacement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, it really definitely leaves open spots. And on the other hand, and this is something that's that might be like my sustainable part of the brain that it's really think about how can we make the world better. If you're only like working with a couple superpowers, I wonder how much of the defective goods will be repaired or just thrown away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's it doesn't seem very economical in the terms of of stuff. Certainly in the in the sense of getting money. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dan, we have what's apparently a a lagging issue with the uh, with the video and. Um, the audio is working fine, says Sarang, but uh, Valeria is saying that it's all lagging. And the, the weird thing is I can see Dan moving absolutely perfectly. And um, you guys can't really see us. We're just, you know, stuck in in dial-up stuff. Um, I don't mm. know what to suggest. Um, I will try and fix it um, without breaking anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I really want to get Nicole on the show, but I don't want to do it if we can't give great uh, video. You know, that would be silly. Yeah. So, do you want to restart? Um, I, I'm going to just go into the old, you know, the old modem settings and have a little look. And this is where I find out right. that my, my family are upstairs watching Netflix times three, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. We're all watching Netflix, three shows at the same time. Yeah, so, <laughs> and someone is downloading Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven simultaneously. Yeah, yeah, that that was me. I'm oh, actually, okay. I've, I've, I, I, I'm not feeling it, Dan. Just to go into Cyberpunk quickly, but uh, I'm not really feeling the game. Okay, I hear. You. Um, oh well, I've I've tried a couple of games from my pile of shame lately, and it didn't click. So I started Last of. I I I think we could be good. The numbers are good. They've got a green light on um, on the on the thing with the thing. OBS is telling me we have green lights rather than yellow and red. So I think we are back, and I wow. think it is actually working as it should be. Um, so it, uh, yeah, I don't want to get anyone in trouble in my house, but there was other internet things going on in my house. Um, <laughs> you know what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> and he just locked his kids and family away like his wife and kids they're all everybody's gone is that yeah well, is that too soon about... we don't say that in austria not anymore <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, <laughs> I was about to say, you gotta be careful when we're talking about Austrian yeah. people. Yeah, be, be, be careful, yeah. man. Uh, are yeah, are yeah. we live? Because um, I I don't know. Apparently, everyone is saying yeah. Oh, cool. Hello. Um, because my chat, on, as you can probably see on the screen, the chat is not updated, uh, and I have no idea why. But what I think we're gonna do is is um, get Nicole Millick to save us. <laughs> <laughs> Because if there's anyone in the world that can save us, it's Nicole. Because um, you'll find out in a minute. I don't want to give too much away, but she, you know, or build her up too much. But she's probably the best thing you've ever seen. All right. Uh, that's not a joke. Yeah, as per I mean, usual. The best yeah. introduction you can get. No, I'm, I'm Expectations are are pretty high now, but I think expectations she'll... are high. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. She'll deliver. I'm pretty sure about oh. that. Yeah. Uh, so let me just sort this live chat out. So, Nicole, I'd like to say that it's not always like this. <laughs> but... <laughs> He's lying. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be a lie, wouldn't it, Dan? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's the thing. We're, we're doing it for fun. And you, I, I just pointed it out earlier in the chat before the show that Andy is like working so hard. He's trying to improve every week. It's like there's not a single week where I don't get a message. Ah, can we can we start a little bit earlier and just test this and try that? Uh, <laughs> I, I love that. I love that, man. It's like <laughs> it's great, really. I, I am working hard, but working hard is not what you should be doing. It's working smart, right? And, uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we get there. Ultimately, we As get there. As I say, there. don't work with animals or children or Andy. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, as we're kind of on a roll of me screwing things up, why don't we just get Nicole in? You know? Yeah, please. Please. Um, so, Nicole, I know you're in the chat. This is super meta. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add you to the chat that Dan and I are currently in. Um, and this week, we're going to try not to give away anyone's Skype details or home address. Hey, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nicole Millick is there. Hello, Nicole. Oh my God! Hello, the everybody. <laughs> so, Nicole, we we can wait, wait. We can see you. We can hear you. But the people of the internet cannot. So, save okay. all save all your funny jokes and your digs at me and <laughs> for, for a little moment. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh dear! Oh, you already got a Christmas tree in the background. Yeah, sure. Awesome. I mean, it's Christmas time, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so you being a singer, I assume you you sing a lot of Christmas songs, and well, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. Oh, oh. So you hey! are now. Hey! Can the um, people see me now? See me now. Hello, 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 everybody. The people can see you. I, there's, there would have been an echo for a moment. I've got rid of the echo because I learned that last time. And now I'm just going to make sure that you don't suddenly change size because I've learned how to do that. So give me one second. <laughs> and if you're interested, I'm going to scale you to inner bounds. Oh, my God. <laughs> I know. I know. No one wants to see that. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask you a question, Nicole, before we kick off? Yes, a very sure. important question. Do you watch The Mandalorian? No. Okay, right. It's really lovely talking All to right, you. I hope you have a nice evening. Nice. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I really couldn't care less, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm she's sorry. busy writing songs, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. Nicole, are you wearing headphones? Yes. Cool, because that means you and I both, we're all wearing headphones that no one can see. That's great. So people complain about Echo <laughs> on the podcast all the time and not not happening to me. It's like, it's the video okay, because I tried out like upping the quality game and I've got Ooh. like a proper camera filming me right now for the first time in my life. So I don't know if that is working or not. You look amazing. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, Thanks, Andy. You too. Your hair is incredible. Thanks. I, um, now that you're now that you're up in your camera game, I'm going to actually put my camera in focus. <laughs> <laughs> my hair is uh, apparently breaking the internet this week. Um, the last time yeah. I posted photos of my hair, Google went down for an hour. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. Shouldn't be doing that. No. Um, so Dan, Nicole, Thanks for Nicole, Dan, you, by the way. everybody, Sorry, Nicole. I haven't said hi, hello, but. 
hello. I can't see the chat right now. Let me change that. I'm going to... Oh, come on, Nicole. We've got a level of professionalism <laughs> on this podcast. <laughs> frankly, I won't save you. <laughs> frankly, you're, you're high above me at the moment. <laughs> <sighs> so... I'm so excited. I've never been on a podcast before. What? This is my first time. It's oh. very exciting. Well, I, yeah. I don't know what to say about that, have, Dan. Have you ever listened? <laughs> I don't know. Have you listened to, to our show before? Did you know what to expect? Well, I've joined the live stream last week. That was my first time. I actually didn't know about the podcast. You did a really bad job at promoting yeah. it because yeah. I haven't Thank seen it anywhere. <laughs> have you seen the podcast? You want to know why we don't promote it? <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah um i i've seen a little snippet of it and yeah <laughs> and well, she still decided to come to the show this week That's yeah because yeah. i mean it's really nice to meet you dan i i don't really know much about you but i've i've worked with andy before and i just thought this was going to be fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Are you having so fun funny. so far, Nicole? I think absolutely, yes. Mission accomplished. I love the bit where you broke the live stream the most. Thanks. That's so that's far. one of our favorite features. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I made you a no, special video and everything. I made you a video, so I'm gonna play it. Watch, watch this. <laughs> See, I did your wow. Dramatic intro. Wow. Wow. And there was music that you didn't hear, but you might have heard it earlier on, on, on the live stream. Same piece. Yeah, I repeated. guess it was probably very dramatic. Yeah. I love how everything is very dramatic. The last 10 seconds of the countdown. Wow. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Amazing. What? Don't tell anyone, Nicole, but at that point, I was running back into the studio from having gone to the toilet and trying to plug my headphones in and failing. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Sounds don't, great. Don't, don't tell anyone. Don't tell. Anyone. So um, this is the Guitar Stories podcast, Nicole, and um, yeah. we'd like to hear your guitar stories. And the the title okay. of the this episode is "You Only Need One Guitar." Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, do you want to expand on that? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, to be quite honest, I own more than one guitar, but for a very long, all I've been playing was one guitar for 10 years I've only played one guitar my favorite guitar a Taylor guitar I'm not sponsored but Taylor guitars are the best um and uh so that's what I've been playing and that's all you need really I think in my opinion now that I've got oh. more than one Taylor guitar I think you need more than one Taylor guitar <laughs> but um for a very long time that has been my one and only so you're quite attached to your first Taylor guitar, if I remember rightly. Yeah. Yes. And you don't She's let anyone else right touch here. it. I thought that she would like to join this podcast. This All is her. Right. She's a very old lady, but I love her very much. So, you know, let's let's get, get gear geeky for a little bit. What is she? I I don't like calling guitars she, but she. And, and she is, she, I just have to put a little disclaimer before everything I say. I love guitars, but I know nothing about them. So I'm not a guitar geek in that sense. I love to play them, but I know nothing about them. So this is a Taylor 110 CE, and that is all I know about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm like the top? worst guest for Guitar no. Stories podcast. I'm so sorry. Definitely what was not. No, we'll, sorry. We'll, we'll get in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was just wondering, when, when did you buy it? Like, how old is it? You, you um, said you played it for 10 years or 10 years old, or did you purchase yeah, it's it 11, even earlier? 11 years, I believe. All right. And a half years. Yeah. All right. And I grew Fairly. up in the countryside. We just had like a very, very small um, music shop, music instrument shop. And that's where I got my very, very first guitar. And then I wanted a Taylor guitar. So I had to 
order it online and I've never played it before and it just arrived at my doorstep and I played it and I fell in love and I was so happy because it cost costed me a lot of money <laughs> and I was like Shit, if I don't like it that that's gonna be bad but yeah I loved her and I love her still what is it about I like that you call her her, <laughs> her. <laughs> why don't you like to call guitars her it was a bit creepy Cause... As, I don't know if it's because I'm a man. Uh, it's fine for you to, you know. I, I don't know. I, don't, yes. I just don't feel it probably comfortable. Probably would be really creepy if I'd say like him. <laughs> yeah, that, that's he was weird. He, that would be creepy. Yeah. Okay, let's call it it for this podcast. You, it's okay. Nicole, it's, if it's a she'll her, be fine. <laughs> does does she have a name or is it just she? She doesn't. She oh, that's doesn't. that's okay then. That's okay. Okay. No, she doesn't have a name. And are you sure? That she identifies as a she? Yes. Okay. Very sure. Okay, good. I spent a lot of hours <laughs> talking to her. <laughs> <laughs> Does that make me a guitar geek? I think so. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no many doubt. ways to be a guitar geek, and that's just one of them. <laughs> so what is it that you love about her? Um, I love the sound, mainly. I love the sound. I love how she feels. That <laughs> sounds so wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, it's it's a great guitar. Now that I've got like guitars to compare it to, I must say that it's a pretty difficult guitar to play. Like, I can't believe that I've played so many hours on this guitar because now I've got the Grand Pacific. You've got the Grand Pacific as well, which is right here. And this guitar it just is so easy to play for hours and hours and hours i don't get like any kind of pain in my hand from it and when i switch back to my old guitar it's just a completely different feeling which is so weird to me because for years i i didn't realize it was actually quite a difficult guitar to play now you get got used to playing that difficult instrument so everything else is a breeze but feels strange right <laughs> yeah probably yeah <laughs> Oh, well, that's, that, I think that's not that's not necessarily a, a, a strange story because I heard from uh, other other stories, for instance, from Carlos Santana, who said that whenever he's composing in the studio, he's he's preferring to play a Strat because he's got to fight with the instrument. Then uh, his PRSs they play super easy and buttery, but when it comes to you know oh, playing guitar, where he has to invest a little bit more and even more. You know, blood, sweat, and tears, so to say. It might also be like spark the creative process of writing and, and playing. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Oh, that sounds really interesting. So, is 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 her? Is she <laughs> the? Uh, <laughs> is she the your your main instrument when you write music, or do guitars like different guitars inspire you for to to write different songs and have kind of different? Um, I don't know. Sorry, Stories, I think my laptop just sounds like it's about to take off. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I hope you can't hear it. <laughs> um, no, I can't well, hear it doing that. that now that I've got the options, I would definitely say that every instrument, every guitar has a different feel to it. So um, it totally depends on my mood which guitar I reach for, which is so interesting because, as I said, I've only had that one guitar for years and years and years, and I've never felt like I missed out on stuff. And now that I've got the option, um, I do sometimes feel like, oh, yeah, today I'm in a mood to play that guitar or I want to write this and that song with that mood. And that would be like a good guitar to write it on, which I think is so funny. Once you've got the options, in, you know, it's it's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I always see it like I compare it with a painter. You know, a painter doesn't own just one brush. Yeah, true. Like, oh, that's not good. Not just one, not just one color. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that one. Amazing. When people ask me, like, why do you need so many guitars? I'm going to be like, have you ever seen a painter with just one brush? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, great. You got any pedals, Nicole? Nope. Oh, <laughs> not a single one. <laughs> not even a looper. You haven't even tried like looping yourself and, and playing. Um, I've had a looper for like a month. Oh, I still have got one. 
There you go. Back, actually, I still got one. <laughs> um, I I never use it. No, I don't know. I just I'm so used to just playing the guitar. Um, no looping, no pedals. Oh, that's interesting. May I, may, may, I, may I kindly uh, like go straight to one question I had earlier? Like, what is like your approach when you write a song? Do you first compose music and then add add the lyrics later, or is is it vice versa, or is there no such thing like a kind of standard process on how you write your songs? I would say there is no standard pro process. It's often I just sit down with a guitar, I start playing, and then often it's quite simultaneously that I kind of write the music and the words, which aren't really words, but more like mumbling some stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it kind of develops into a proper, proper, proper lyrics. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah. basically you're kind of sorting, sorting out the melody with your voice while you're like playing the background chords. Yes. So you get an idea of how the overall exactly. sound would be. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's interesting. How do you do it, Andy? You've been so quiet. I haven't seen you so quiet in a while. <laughs> Still in, sh in, in shock. <laughs> <laughs> no pedals. So, pedals. So what you're saying is you have no pedals, right? No. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm just sometimes, believe it or not, Nicole, I enjoy listening. Uh, you don't learn anything when you're talking, you know? So, yeah. Um, so you were not impressed by that one? You like the painter's brush, but you don't like that one? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just listening because, uh, of course, you and I have a, have a history of working together and making songwriting videos. And even we did a songwriting challenge, Dan. And, that was um, interesting. And Nicole and I had a little bit of a fight. <laughs> a little bit. A little oh, bit of a fight. Because apparently <laughs> I, I, I cheated. I, I cheated, You apparently. cheated. Not apparently. You cheated without the apparently. <laughs> All right. Do you really want to get back into that argument? <laughs> I don't I, think I, well, so. I believe I do. <laughs> okay. Let's All do right, it. Let's Dan, Dan, my friend Dan, my best friend Dan, my my friend, my brother in, in arms Dan is here to adjudicate. Dan. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> All right. I'm all ears. I'm not afraid. Should I'm I? I'm not afraid. Should I set the stage? Should I? And then correct me when I'm obviously wrong. And yeah, then I'll, sure. I, I'll I'll let you give your side, and then I'll tell the truth. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we were making a songwriting series for Tolman. Mm -hmm. Nicole and I were given a challenge to, so far, so good. <laughs> to write a song <laughs> using a sheet of lyrics that was given to us. Yeah. The challenge was, <laughs> I've just seen in the chat that Michaela said, Nicole is right, I cheated. See? I haven't even got to the story yet. <laughs> <laughs> the challenge was to use the lyrics that were written for us to write a song. Am I right so far or wrong so far? Absolutely correct. Okay. Now, what Nicole did is she went away and wrote a, a beautiful, if I may say so, a beautiful piece of music with the beautiful lyrics, beautifully sung, beautifully played, and it was beautiful. Using every word. Every word. Every and word. I decided to not use all the lyrics and also move them around a little bit. I maybe even have added one here and there. What? Andy, well, but was that part of the challenge? But I would debate that it was not not allowed. Use well, these lyrics to write a song. Freedom. Well, and I wouldn't. Because <laughs> a challenge, you know, that's not a challenge. That is like, okay, I'm just going to make my life a lot easier by crossing out a whole line and adding a whole line. <laughs> that is not a challenge, my friend. That is cheating. Are you are you afraid of my creativity, Nicole? Always. <laughs> so Dan, it's up wow, to you, my I friend. Wow, I really didn't think you would you would do this Dan, on this podcast. Dan, you, look, Dan, I'm looking at you. Well, being being the judge here, I would definitely say that like looking at like the rules that you provided, Andy was clearly cheating. But oh, let me add one thing. Isn't like walking on the grass instead of, of the street. Isn't that like part of the creative process to have that kind of artistic freedom and kind of explore behind the boundaries? Oh my gosh. 
What about that? <laughs> Where's Dan's PayPal details? Uh... <laughs> well, sure. I'll, I'll, it was I'll great. It... Thanks for having me. Um, yep. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> We have a Star Trek <laughs> reference in the chat that's, that Nicole's going to love this. It's not cheating, it's Kobayashi Maru. It is. <laughs> I have no, no idea clue. what you're talking about, but... Okay. Um, you, Nicole, I, I'm sorry for bringing that up. I just wanted to see what Dan would do, because Dan's such a diplomatic, nice person that somehow he would manage <laughs> to not only diffuse the situation... Oh, did you know that last Thursday, better? Andy joined my live stream... And he said that you were horrid. No, that was a typo. Uh, torrid <laughs> is the word I was looking for. He's like, he's all over the place, like, like swishing water. <laughs> I just didn't there want you, you to go, think Andy. that I didn't, I wanted you to be prepared for today because, you know, yeah. Um, I want to, let's just, that let's go challenge. to the chat, Nicole, because people are yeah. definitely agreeing with you. Um, Dan's already clarified that I was right, and in <laughs> Valeria has posted the, the the um the link to the video, so I I don't know, but I'm assuming it is. And now, once and for all, Nicole, I'd like to set the record straight, if I may. Yeah. I am sorry that you feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I hate you. <laughs> I'm sorry, and I cheated. However, I didn't care. You at the won. Time. Yeah, it's okay. Don't worry. Um, and I love the song. My life wrote. doesn't depend on that songwriting challenge, you know. Yeah, well, mine did. <laughs> That's why I'm fine with you winning and changing. I mean, you know, everyone does what he's capable of, and if that was the only way forward for you, then there you go. Boom. <laughs> well, the thing is, Dan and, and Nicole, we're famous for amazing transitions from segment to segment. I kind of, <laughs> I kind of stopped writing songs after that because it, it scarred me so deeply. But Nicole took that confidence and recorded, wrote, and produced a whole new selection of songs, and she released a single recently. Wow. Smooth. That nice. was really smooth. Thank you. Um, that is true. Yes, I've released a single, which is called "What If." If I can promote it right here, right now, and uh, it's my first proper, 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 proper single, uh, which I'm really excited about. Got a video and everything, hasn't it? Yes, everything, which was a lot of work. That video, wow. Yeah, I, you know, just thought I don't really have anything to do this year because of this thing that we're living in. <laughs> um, why not learn to do a hat stand and juggle and dance and do all the fun stuff for a music video? <laughs> yeah, it was fun times. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, no, honestly, I had high expectations in the most complimentary way. Um, but it's beautiful. I know you're working with the producer as well, and it's very clear that you've yeah. um, at least taken some arrangement um, ideas of his. And I'm not trying to detract from from your creativity there, but it certainly sounds like a new Nicole. Is what I'm trying to say. And it sounds like you've no, collaborated. No, definitely is is a lot of of my producer's work. Because as I said, I don't really know a lot about all that stuff. So I just you know, I write and I sing and I play the guitar, but um, I know kind of what I wanted to sound like, but then um, my producer just made it sound exactly what I wanted it to sound like, which I'm really thankful for because I, I don't know. I just don't know how to do that stuff. I'm really happy that this is working right now and that somehow I managed to be in this live stream with like a microphone and a camera. This is like, all I'm capable of. So yeah, um, I'm super excited and happy and thankful. When you when you talk about like the the production of of the song, do you have any kind of role models or like examples that you particularly like when it comes to you know acoustic artists how they sound? 
because they are also different. You know, they're the poppy kind of acoustic artists, and there are ones that have a very orchestral sound. And just recently, I discovered John Gomm's album, who's just another dimension because it's almost cinematic. Like, what, what's your take on that? Like, what's your preferred tone when it comes to the production? That's a very good question. Um, Because I love them all. Like, I love super acoustic and I love something that's like a little bit more than that. Like everything from country to uh, like super pop at Sheeran and then like super folky stuff. I I love it all. But for me, um, one thing I was just always so like passionate about is that my song needs to have an acoustic guitar in it. Like there have been people in my life that try to like move me away from the guitar and make it sound more electric and like more trendy what's in the charts and a little bit more, you know, dancey and stuff. And uh, to me, it was always really important that it has this raw feeling to it, like a little bit of acoustic and then like kind of produce it around the acoustic guitar and not make it sound like something completely different so that people you know they listen to it and it isn't just me with a guitar but that guitar and that me is still in it and very prominent that was really important to me hmm. very interesting it also means that all your songs would work just with the voice and the acoustic guitar no like bells and whistles around it's just yeah Yeah, because that's, that's how, how I write them. So yeah. every song I write, I write with an acoustic guitar and my voice. And to me, it's really important that it works like that, you know, because when I perform, I like most of the times I perform with just the guitar. So everything needs to work with just the guitar. Um, and so far, that's also the sound I really like. Like um, sometimes I listen to electric music that is like very electric, but I like it to be a little bit more natural sounding. Awesome. Would it be a smooth transition if I asked you to play that song so that everyone <laughs> knew what, what we were yeah. actually talking about? Incredible transition, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I told you. I told yeah. you. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, he's stuck. No. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is uh, my song and it's called what if and it goes a little something like this always everyone always makes fun of me in my live streams when I play a song and every song I sing I say and it sounds a little something like this is like my transition to the song so, and it sounds a little something like this you only get it if you're a skit you know the biscuit and every bar seems to love the taste while you sit here choking on my silly mind that I've tried to find deep inside me when it's time to surely will survive it starts with overthinking the thought and sinking drowning in the sea looks like somewhere between dark and gold and then it starts to grow my fear of I don't know it comes with one two three and then it disappears the aftertaste remains it goes with five fools me the leaves on town no break no pulse of space I'm feeling fully lost inside this maze no one and no one ever seems to understand me I'm just I'm getting myself try not to hate me Until the next big thing that you think is tiny But my brain quite likes it Besides the size that I, I I wanna say what keeps me low Want it to shut, shut up mm. Want it to get, get, get up and let go And out. I don't wanna feel what I don't know What if it turned out right And I'd be stuck or I could get up and let go The volume of my own eyes just be as loud as I could hear talk to me And I forgot about this or that decision as do you know the error count The number on the line in red You say relax, I forgot instead And if you ever think the worry doesn't matter I think I make it better oh, oh, oh. I'll wait and wait till it's too late And watch the time sailing away Until my heart is beating fast The feeling lasts the water blast No one and no one ever seems to understand me I just I'm getting myself, try not to hate me Until the next big thing that you think is tiny But my brain quite likes it, size to size it I, I wanna 
Wonderful. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Um, if you're in the chat, then you can write the letter C and press enter. That, that, that's like clapping. Oh, the claps. Yeah. Oh, the C. <laughs> I remember that. Um, <laughs> Thank you so Dan, much, everyone. Um, I've heard this so many times before. I'll, I'll leave you to it. What, what, what can you say? A lovely performance. I really like the flow of everything. Like I was, I was grooving like right after she started to sing and that was I, I i totally felt between stuck between um i know it had even flow like i would associate with rappers like eminem that kind of you know that kind of flow of words you know That's it's it's it reminding me a little bit of it you know it's i i love eminem and it, it had that flow and also like of course uh, one of your main influences might be ed sheeran if i'm correct yeah yeah i love ed sheeran yeah so for sure but it also has this this very unique vibe you've got a beautiful voice Thank uh, you. it's just lovely i mean if i if i didn't if i hadn't known before that you're um german uh i would have thought you you're a british girl thank you that's like the biggest compliment for me because yeah. i just love the brits <laughs> <laughs> most so of us are let's really not nice. going to brexit but <laughs> <laughs> but where, where, like, what region? I, I assume you've stayed in in Great Britain for quite some time. Where no, you, never, where you, never no? in my life. No. Actually, oh, no, wow. I just have that really okay. weird obsession with England and the English right. language. It's, I just right. love it so much, almost as much as I love guitars, really. <laughs> <laughs> trying so hard not to make a joke out of all of this because that was such a great performance of course my default mode is to wind you up and you know be be silly but go for it andy that's how i know you no I, i'm not going to do that because that's a single man that is a single it's not just a song <laughs> that is a single and um living in a world now of singles you know albums are not really the the current fashion Mm -hmm. you've, got a, you've got like one sort of song to stand out and I, I, I have to agree with Dan there was some great flow there and I'd like to talk about that in a moment but that that sticks out instantly as if you sang that to me um, saying this is my new single and I hadn't heard the version already and the produced version I'm like well okay now, now I, I know exactly what it would sound like with the production uh, ah, it's, I'm trying cool. not to swear because it's a really, really good song. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask before because I do swear for a very short moment in that song. And I wanted to ask if it's okay if I swear. I and thought I totally you did. Forgot, and I totally sweat and I'm swore. S swore did. Swore. Swore did. Totally swore, swore did. And I'm, I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't even ask if that was okay. So I'm really sorry. <laughs> Um, oh. that's, that's that yeah I, I thought you did but it, I, I felt the song needed it and yeah I felt the song it's it's quite there's like a there's an energy there's it's not an aggressive energy it's a it's like a pent-up energy that, that needs to come out and sometimes that's what that's the beauty of swearing is that one should save certain swear words for certain occasions and um it's very expressive especially in the English language if I may yeah yeah, I don't like swearing in the German language, to be honest. I, I don't do, know I do. why I love doing it in, in English, but in German, I hate it. When people swear in German songs, I hate it. When people swear in English songs, I really don't mind it at all. So I don't know <laughs> why. It's, it's a weird language. That's very thing. odd for me living in Austria and having, you know, going into shopping centers and quite happily buying bread and things. And then there's people effing and flipping and, and all sorts of stuff on the radio and people are walking around like la 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 <laughs> oh my goodness 
<laughs> but I, I want to talk about your music. Um, I want to ask about the flow and everything. How much your boyfriend Max had influence, or how much you were influenced by him? Because he's he's a hip hop artist, isn't he? Oh, that is an interesting question. Yeah, he is a rapper and singer. I would say he does like hip pop. I would call it. Um, so it's like a mixture of hip hop and pop. Uh, that's a good question. I would probably say that my flow probably improved um, in the last couple of years because of him. I don't know how much he influenced the flow in that song, but I definitely think that I have gotten um, a much better feeling for flows and like how words flow in like what kind of way. Um, I never thought of that before. Wow, but that it kind of makes a lot of sense to be honest. <laughs> I, I was I thought I was asking a really obvious question. I'm sorry. Um, you know that guy that you you know you spend a lot of time with. <laughs> how much does he <laughs> how much does he influence you? <laughs> but you know, I never thought about that to be honest. I mean, he influences me in a lot of ways because to be honest, it's very unusual for me to have such an upbeat songs because I write songs usually like I'm a very melancholic person and <clears throat> I love writing sad songs and he is the exact opposite so he writes a lot of happy songs and he like always motivational songs um so maybe this entire song is like super inspired by him <laughs> who knows like the flow and the upbeatness of it you never know thank you Andy for bringing that up never thought about that you're welcome Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a question from the chat from David okay. Munoz. Um, I'm sorry for butchering your name. He has a question. What is your recipe, if you have any, for writing a good song? Oh, what is a good song? Is my question. Maybe I can um, rephrase it then. Um, do you have any, like, uh, sorry, for David, for, for rephrasing the question, but maybe when do you know something's a good song and something's not so good? I, I don't think you know, to be honest. I like, for me, I, I write a lot of songs and the night I, I write them, I think it's the best song I've ever written. And then the next morning I wake up and I think, oh my God, that is the worst thing that has ever come out of you. Um, so I think it totally depends on what you are going for and also what you wanna tell the audience with the song, because there will always be be people who will be like oh this is such a bad song and other people will love it so there is really no recipe for a good song there's just a you know you just write a song and if you like it then it's a good song um that is my tip if you love it people will feel you love it and they might also love it if you're like oh this song's kind of weird and not so good then people are very likely to not like it as well that would be my my recipe interesting so do you decide on your on your own or do you talk with max or your parents or like who who's really the judge when it comes to a song to to decide whether it's like single material or, I mean, because i assume you write a lot of songs so you have must have a big catalog of, of different songs and different moods and so so how do you you know, separate them, the, for the me, good from the better. For me, it's like very often, like, I actually record a song and release it. <clears throat> Not so much for my YouTube channel. I very often just write something and then a couple of days later, I upload it to my YouTube channel. But when it comes to just really releasing songs, it takes me forever because I am such an overthinker that I always think, oh, I could write something better than that. So to mm. me, it's like... Um, if I really like a song and I like it for more than a week or two or a month, then I'm like, oh, this song really is probably something special and like better maybe than other songs I've written. And then um, I, I either play it to my producer or obviously play it to, to my boyfriend, my parents, my family, my friends. And I'm like, okay, what do you think? Is, is this actually good or is this just in my brain? <laughs> and that mm -hmm. really helps. But for me, it is really time, you know, only time can tell if you really like something or not. Because um, 
I've written songs that I I thought were amazing and they probably were quite good for that time and the mood that I was in at that time but for me and it doesn't have to be that way because I've I feel like you can release songs and then two years later feel like you're not in the same mood anymore and you don't feel the song <clears throat> and definitely be kind of happy with with it and and the message and, and stuff I'd say all right that's a good answer very artistic approach yeah 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 <laughs> I don't know if this is helpful at all. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm not like, you know, I'm not a super professional songwriter and singer and guitarist, so there are people that probably can give you better songwriting tips, but you know, just in my opinion, you got to you will if a song is is good and and the right mm -hmm. song. I may ask, do you have like one particular song that's something like your favorite song or the song that influenced you the most? Maybe the song that uh, inspired you to pick up the guitar? Is there such a, a song or artist? Mm, again, it, it just always changes. I'm like a very um, extreme person in that sense that I always, whenever I hear a song that, that I really like, it's like the best song I've ever heard. And I will listen to it on repeat for a month and be like, oh my God, that's the best song. I wish I'd written it. And oh my God, this is Pat Stevens or like Yusuf Islam, he's called now, um, when mm. I uh, was a kid. And I think that really inspired that love for acoustic guitar for me. Um, but then like right now, I just love country music so much. I think country is just incredible. Um, it's like so pure and wonderful. So um, I, I couldn't pinpoint it to, to one song, but more like like very guitar-y songs, acoustic guitars. Because I haven't, and I know that probably lots of people will hate me for that, but I haven't really found my love for electric guitars yet. I don't know. There's just nothing that sparks my excitement when it comes to electric guitars. Um, and I don't know if that will ever come. I'm so sorry, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, 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 Andy's first, you're not wrong. You are not accent. wrong because because that's your choice, okay? And, and I'm being very fair in saying you're not wrong, and, and you're not, because they are two different instruments, and anyone that plays electric guitar doesn't necessarily also play acoustic guitar. They're, they're very similar, but not the same. And I like to play both, and in different it's a different feeling however i love nothing more than to plug an electric guitar into a fuzz pedal and just hold a note and just let it go <laughs> uh, and really and that's the sound that i just get no enjoyment from like also from like just listening to it i just need like clean and pure sound instead of this Rah! that's just not music to me <laughs> Isn't that great? I'm so Rather sorry. Than, no, you don't. Stop it. Uh, it's great that you're not trying to. You're like you're, you're being true to what you actually feel. And I think that comes across in your music. If you don't like something, then you you know you're not trying to. <laughs> sorry, I'm just reading the comments in the chat. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> apparently, Mikhail doesn't get any enjoyment from me doing that either. Thank you, Mikhail. Um No, it, it comes across <laughs> in your music that when when you play and when you sing, even especially when you're doing covers, you, you strip them right back which I know is nothing new and lots of people strip them right back. But when when an artist has such control uh, of their voice, uh, which is the instrument and the guitar, your guitar just sits underneath that voice. Um, and I, I love the way that both complement each other. And there's there's no there's no bullshit in there. And um, that's that's, that's yeah, nice. don't get me wrong. I kind of I, I've like my producer is a really incredible guitarist and he plays the electric guitar and i must say that i would miss the sound of electric guitar in my music if um if i if it wasn't there um but like i just wonder if i will wake up someday and be like i need to get an electric guitar and play the electric guitar you know because i've never felt that in my life i don't know how it feels to be like oh my god i need to play the electric guitar you know that's just that's just what i'm wondering <laughs> well and i think we just got to send uh, nicole a playlist with the 
10 most recommended songs for the, of the electric guitar, like yeah. instrumental stuff or anything else that was vital. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I, I, I just totally killed the vibe of that podcast. No, <laughs> not I'm at good, all. I'm it's good. it's it's refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe and a good electric guitar, and then my I promise, more, you know. I I promise, at some point in your life, will def you will definitely try out the electric. Uh, I'm super sure about that because you know it's like when you when you look at artists, they always have kind of phases, and they have like a mainstay of of, of kind of their instruments that they rely to, and they play the songs on and write songs on. But over the course of your career and an artistic kind of development, I think there will be a point where you not just want to change brushes, but also change colors or even Ooh. change the, the surrounding where you paint, you know? So uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't rule that out that you at some point we we'll, we we'll see electric, Nicole. This is what has made me quite sad in the past to see artists like Ellie Goulding, for example. She used to play the acoustic guitar all the time on stage, on in her songs, <clears throat> everywhere. And now whenever she performs, she performs with an electric guitar. That really made me sad because I was a big Ellie Goulding fan. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then like Ola Gartland, for example, she used to play the acoustic guitar and now she only plays the electric guitar. And I just feel like, you know, the acoustic guitar is dying out a bit. I don't know. I, so I don't know why why people just prefer to to play the electric then at some point in their career. I don't think that's ever going to happen to me. I mean, maybe it will, maybe it won't. I don't know, but <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think it should. Well, I, I think I you're not allowed at this a point. Lot of I, think, us... I think you should be banned <laughs> and, and never allowed to touch an electric guitar in your life. <laughs> I mean, I, I do have an electric guitar. Uh, it's a very cheap one and it probably isn't very great but I do own one because um, I just there was a phase in my life where I wanted to own 10 guitars so I thought it would be a good idea to just buy a lot of cheap guitars just to have a lot of guitars um, that was before I got the Taylor guitar by the way um, um, and I so I <laughs> I, I love how she sneaks in that uh, that segment. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I've also got an Ibanez guitar, by the way. Um, I've got them all, but I really don't. I, I don't know, you know. So I've got one right there, but I never reach for it, never. And I, I don't know. Nicole, I'm afraid it's the rule of the <laughs> podcast. If you mention something that's in the room. You then have to bring it on camera. I need to know what that guitar is. Well, it's not really in the room. It's not. We have like little Abstellkammern, it's called in <laughs> in German. Um, and it's somewhere, right? I mean, I could. OK, I'm, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. You talk about something. Let's, let's have uh, bets in the chat <laughs> as to second. what it is. I'm going to go for Dan. I think it might be a golden tone. Okay. Anybody guess what it might be in, in the oh. uh, in the chat, or at least what color? I'm gonna go for sunburst. I'll go for blue. Blue. Uh, in the chat, we got a, a candy apple red. Two candy apple reds. Un wire red. Geo black. How did she do that? Didn't she? Here I am. Okay. Yeah. We're taking bets okay. as to what it is. So we're, we're very interested. I mean, it is. I'm probably not allowed to show it on here, or someone is going to get really mad at me. <laughs> this is it. It looks beautiful. Sunburst. Yeah. It's uh, Tobacco Burst Vintage. Show us the headstock. But I mean. <laughs> Uh, nah, I, I don't know if I can. It's okay. Listen, it's a. <laughs> it's called J and D Brothers. Oh no, I'm gonna. I know J and D Brothers. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So why why can't That's you it. show that? 
because Toman's going to be really mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's born in Cologne, I guess. <laughs> See, yeah, see. that's it. I haven't played it in probably 12 years or something. Looks great. It uh -huh. looks super unused. Probably played it yeah. Mint. twice in my life. <laughs> well, um, I'm going to try and open I up really your, wonder, like, uh, your eyes in a moment. Sorry, Dana. I spoke over you. Oh, good. You want to open up my eyes? Yes, to the world of electric guitar. And I believe... Okay. That the um the way to do that is for you to transform, knowing that the electric guitar is not just the guitar. The electric guitar is a combination <laughs> of the guitar, amplifier, and dare I say, the occasional pedal. So hmm. until you have a nice amp, <laughs> if you're playing that, are you playing that unplugged, or have you have you ever had an amp as well? No, I, yeah, I've, I've had an amp in my life, and I just. You know, I didn't like an acoustic as much as possible. That's the sound I went for with this. So I'm I'm seeing you with um, something kind of fendery in the amp way, a semi-acoustic electric guitar with oodles of reverb and ambient splash in the background, with a light okay. overdrive, a light overdrive, very light. Yeah. I have no idea what you're talking about, but it sounds amazing. Something that's not too dissimilar to the intro guitar that's on What If. Something okay. in that kind of... Yeah, I like that. Poppy, not too aggressive. Sound. Yeah. Yeah, don't like the aggressive side of electric guitars. Not yet, you don't. <laughs> yeah, um, thank you for getting that. And people are asking if you live in a circular house because you went off screen left and came back on screen right. <laughs> Have I? Did I go out this way? You went out times? that way. <laughs> no, hang on. That way. That way. And then you came back in that, that way. Well, there's a table in front of me, a coffee table, and I just ran around the coffee table. If that makes sense. It does. Yeah. Sadly, it does. <laughs> I think it more, more interesting story than that, but never mind, you know. <laughs> We've got lots of suggestions uh, in the, the chat guitar. for you. Yeah. <laughs> suggesting people in the chat are suggesting uh, a Bogner half stack and a Parker fly. Um, <laughs> that's amazing. That's a a very strange rig. Um, don't even. It's just a, a rather heavy rig with a rather modern electric guitar. Mm -hmm. um, but. Props, props for the Parker Fly because it's got piezo, so you can easily add in like acoustic tones. <laughs> Big fan of that. <laughs> Flying V in a triple wreck. <laughs> you could just make so much fun of me because I literally don't know what any of this means. So you could write anything and be like, "Oh yeah, great." <laughs> Yeah, but I, I challenge anyone I, I in the chat or here about, in like, the podcast to sing a song and play guitar like you just did. It's it's, it's a different world. <laughs> <laughs> I was any I was I was just wondering, Nicole showed us like the electric guitar that's got humper cars. Uh, have you, Nicole, have you played a Strat style guitar too and and tried that to incorporate that into your sound? Nope. Because it's much different you know especially those uh, let's say cheaper and kind of guitars less pulse style the pickups can be very mumbly and you know it, it's not really a nice very dynamic tone so it's not voice voice like whereas if you if you've got a good guitar with a decent single coil you can have like a, a wide range that it's almost like very similar to to how a voice can sound i mean you can do it with a humbucker too but I think that's particularly striking for a uh, electric guitar with, with single coils. That it's very, how shall I put it, very. Uh, you got a lot of treble, but also got some some clarity. growl to it. It's like clarity. Uh, I I always compare it like yeah yeah, more clarity. Can I, can I show you this, yeah, Nicole, so. and tell me what you think of this one? Oh, that looks cute. I like that one. Nice. 
that's cute. That is a, a semi hollow body. So you've got acoustic chambers just but it's an mm -hmm. electric and it's really small. So it's actually rather heavy for what it is. Not heavy, but it, it's it heavier than good. it looks. But that might not be something for you. But um I think Sarang has just nailed it in the chat. He suggested a jazz master and a deluxe reverb. And I for me, that's pretty much what I was thinking. Sure. Um, the guitar song would if sound like a strat. Um no, my producer, he is a Gibson person. So I think every guitar you hear is is a Gibson. <laughs> that's oh, interesting. Something just fell over. Oh no. <laughs> My headphones. Andy's breaking everything again. <laughs> I, I, my cat was in here earlier, and there was a slight chance that my cat had just woken up because I picked that guitar up, but it's. I managed to, <laughs> managed to scare myself. <laughs> but let's let's stop trying to push you towards electric guitar. All I'm saying is that I respect that you're not into it yet, but I hope you do discover joy from it one day. <laughs> And if you don't... Okay, Andy. If I if I was ever to get like a pedal or something, you'll be the first call I'm gonna make for that. I'm gonna ask you what pedal to get, which doesn't mean I'm ever gonna get a pedal. But in case I do, I will call you. I already know the answer. Okay. <laughs> it's a Strymon Flint. I have to say, it's a Strymon Flint, or something like that. That's the one you need. <laughs> All right, all right. The Miku. Um, the Miku. <laughs> oh my goodness! Now we're really alienating um, Nicole. I want to know what's coming next on your your. Is, is it an album you released or a collection of songs? What are you What are you naming that collection? What do you mean? It's is just it, one song. Yeah, but what's coming next? Are, are you? Okay, what's coming next? Um, probably another single. Um, so I'm not really planning on releasing like an album or an EP or something. So it's probably just going to be a couple of singles. Um, and then we'll see where we go from that. But I really like, I've been super afraid of releasing songs, like really to an extent where I just felt like I couldn't do it. And now that I've done it, I'm like super excited. I would like to just release everything now. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm just hoping I can I can release some more songs um, next year, and that that would be amazing. I, I I'm excited, plan. but the pressure's on. Fine. You know? Pressure's on. That was a yeah. good one. <laughs> I want another good one. <laughs> I'm gonna do my very best. It's gonna be different. I already, I think I already decided what the next single is going to be, and it's gonna be different. It's gonna be different. Cool. cool. Nicole, do you prefer to like play music in the studio and and track stuff, or do you prefer to play live in front of an audience? Ooh, good question. I mean, I really love to perform live. To be honest, um, I love writing songs. I don't enjoy recording that much because again i'm a perfectionist so like it can easily take me forever to record stuff mm -hmm. because i'm always like oh yeah i'm gonna do that again and with live performances you don't have that you just have that one chance and that is the best thing for me <laughs> if i only get like one take um that is great and i just love to have that connection with the audience and you know see the the immediate reaction. So I really love to perform live. Um, and I love writing songs about that recording part. I'm not so super keen. All right. <laughs> How many takes, like, not exact right. number, um, but was it um, simple tracking the stuff for the latest single? Or did you record several takes? Was there uh, a demo version that you tracked over top of? Or how was it for you? That the demo version we've recorded four years ago and I fell in love with the demo and that is the worst thing you can do to fall in love with the demo because the song's never gonna sound like it ever again and um, that was really difficult for us to for like for me to accept the sound um, and how it's gonna sound in the end <clears throat> and uh, yeah so we've had a demo the like Actually, recording it didn't take that long for me because the vocals, I just 
I was kind of happy with and and the acoustic guitar actually um my producer recorded the acoustic guitar and he sent me like the finished song with his acoustic guitar because I don't know why but whenever there's someone in the room who just who I know is better at playing the guitar I'm like oh you do it and then when I actually got the finished song and I wasn't the one playing the acoustic guitar I was like oh no <laughs> this doesn't work for me I I need to play it so we re-recorded the acoustic guitar and that also went pretty pretty quickly so I think my producer actually had a tough time doing like the arrangement and recording all the other stuff and producing it but my part was pretty easy vocals acoustic guitar I'm, I'm quite comfortable doing <laughs> so <laughs> that was wasn't too bad Dan Frozen? I think so. Because Dan <laughs> seems to have frozen, and now I can't hear Nicole, <laughs> but I can see Nicole's audio coming through the thing to the live stream. Um, so now we we'll just That's have to play a guessing game of um, what's going on. What I'm going to do, Nicole, I'm going to hang up this call, and I'm going to call you back just in a second. Um, don't go okay. nowhere. Okay, all right. But I think Dan has, um, has broken the internet. Uh, are we back? Well, I am. Dan I is you. not, Dan, obviously. Dan is a big S, a big letter S, like Superman. <laughs> Dr. Dan, I didn't do Do you know, Nicole, we've had um, uh, issues, technical issues, almost every episode, and I always thought that it was me. But you and I are still here, so... Uh-oh. Well, Dan's in the chat. Dan says he didn't do it. Well, um, I didn't hear anything of what you last said. But uh, said last, whatever that should be in English, um, because I, you cut out as soon as Dan started freezing. But I know the people in the chat did. I want to know, there are some people in the chat that I don't recognize their names because we have so many wonderful people coming back for some reason to watch and listen to this podcast. Um, there is a guy called Jack. There is um, May Melo or something like that. Um, there are three names that I don't really recognize. Are they here because of you, Nicole? Oh, and now Nicole's gone again. Oh, no. It's all going wrong. One moment. I'm so sorry, everybody. Um, this this thing's happening, and Nicole's chosen a, a wonderful face to um, to end the chat on. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm so sorry about this, but... Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm not sorry, but, you know, these things happen. And um, Dan's not there at all. I'm on my own, I'm, I'm finally free. What's going on there? So I'm just going to call Nicole, I think. And then if Dan wants to come back on, I, I, I guess he's restarting right now. But I've really enjoyed what Nicole's had, a, had to say so far. So come back. Come on, Nicole. Ah. Oh, I can see you, you're moving, but I can't hear you. What about now? Hello? Hello, Nicole. Nope. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? No? I don't know, dude. Oh, man alive. Oh, the people can hear you, but I can't. That's okay. all useful. <laughs> <laughs> That's so I funny, like, that I can just can say hear anything. Me as well. um, let me just give one second. Nicole, I know what's going on. Hello, Nicole. Hello, Andy. Hi, there you are. I hear you. <laughs> what was the issue, my friend? Nicole, if I even tried to explain it to you, I wouldn't understand what I was saying. <laughs> it's best we just leave it and, okay. um, and say that there was gremlins. And yeah, of course. Basically, what should happen is I should give up for the... I could have chosen something that's simple, works, and is reliable, or something that's highly modifiable and cool and does, you know, like, changes and stuff. And, of course, I went for the nerdy tech thing. Of course thing. you did. Because uh, you're um, a geek. Yeah, I am. I'm going to add Dan to this call because I think, I think he's going to come back. But Dan's trying to okay. call me. 
Um, I'm going to add Dan. Stop calling me Dan if you're in the chat. Daniel. Daniel. Get... Daniel. Oh, what a beautiful song. Daniel. Um, have you seen Rocket Man, the movie? Not yet. No, I really oh, want to mate. see it. Oh, My so... family's watched it and they all said it's incredible. It's. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really need to see that. Um, <laughs> Valeria. Oh, oh, oh Daniel. there he is. Hello. Hey. Yeah, I'm, using, I'm using my smartphone now. <laughs> hey, what if all this time it's it's you that's the technical issue, not me? <laughs> ah. <laughs> uh, at least I'm glad I didn't miss the performance part. So yeah, all's well, good. <laughs> so. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. This is, I mean, we've had technical problems before, but this one takes the biscuit. It's probably me. That's, yeah. that's just ruining it. It's the electric guitar gods, you know, throwing a, a tantrum. <laughs> <laughs> the pedal gods are calling. <laughs> oh, man. So we normally have all kinds of stuff about gear and things like that, Nicole, and things about... Um, uh news of the week but we kind of screwed that up by you know not having the chance to set it up for for reasons i won't go into but um one thing we do have weekly is mandalorian news <laughs> so it's 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 possibly one of the best parts of the podcast um I, can I couldn't love this podcast more if I try. <laughs> <laughs> you, you should, I you love should... it when Andy's giggling like a schoolgirl. <laughs> well, there are there are a few people in this world that are so mean to me as to Cole. <laughs> <laughs> But also oh does it with a smile. I really respect that. And it's a skill that I hope to learn. You know, one it day. comes from a place of love. You know that. I know. And that's why it's so, that's why I find it so funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, I, I, I'm quite proud of that. So I'm going to, I'm going to play it again, just because Nicole definitely wants to see it again. Here we go. Mandalorian. Nicole, the Mandalorian. Wow. What, what do you know about the Mandalorian, Nicole? Absolutely nothing. Make Just something as up. much as I know about pedals. Make something up. What do you think the Mandalorian is? I have absolutely no freaking idea. Probably something that no one needs in their lives. Right. I'm going to show oh, you something. I think, I think you need it. I'm going yeah. to show you something and tell me what you think. Okay. Oh, yeah. I know this one. I never, yeah. never got that. I mean, he is kind of cute. <laughs> come on how cute is is grogu now that we're calling him Grogu? yeah kind of cute kind of cute kind of cute i don't mind i don't mind being executed on the podcast <laughs> happen. it's gonna happen someday and so it's today's what okay. is the mandalorian andy nikki i'm glad you asked um <laughs> And what are the news? <laughs> the Mandalorian is a show about a guy who makes best new friends every week. Okay. Um, it, it's, it's set in the Star Wars universe. Mm-hmm. And Star Wars is a film and franchise set mm -hmm. in the past, but looks like in the future, but it isn't. Mm -hmm. And in it is a kind of recurring character that bases on something we knew from the first star wars dan stop judging me I'm, so the mandalorian kind of looks a bit like a classic character called boba fett who was in the original trilogy mm -hmm. and grogu is the same species is it species dan would you say species yep. race yep. as yoda who was also in the original yeah so they, i know that done, one that stop saying that one he's a him 
If you can't accept my guitar, who is a she, I won't say that he's a him because it is a thing. <laughs> it is a what? So what they've done very it's cleverly, they, they've, they've taken things that Star Wars fans know and they've changed it just a little bit and just enough and added a bit of sort of Saturday night af afternoon TV. Uh, Saturday night afternoon? Yeah, <laughs> tea time TV is what I'm trying to say. Um, and made it brilliant and made it very accessible. And every yeah. week he's um, he goes and has adventures and does cool stuff and then goes pew pew and then... And he helps people, Nicole. It's full of heart and it makes me smile. So how can it be bad? And that is the most important thing. If it makes you smile, that is everything that matters. It's our happy time, right? 45 minutes, nothing else. Yeah. Well, just some, sometimes it's 28, just so you know, Nicole. They change the time of length, you know. <sighs> Dan and I get very upset. The first thing that we do is check how long the episode is. And it's if it's only yep. 28 minutes. Then... The longer, the better, right? Oh, give us three hours. Uh, <laughs> that's an assist. That's an assist. No, we're not, we're I'm not probably like, oh, it. yeah, only 28 minutes. <laughs> okay, what but uh, to answer your question, to answer your question, what is the news? Oh, my good. What, what isn't the news this week, Nicole? <laughs> This week was one of my favorite episodes ever. I'm going to let Dan do some talking because I did a bad description of the Mandalorian in the Star Wars universe. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. I mean, what was so outstanding about the, the episode? Actually, one of our favorite spaceships, the Slave One, was actually shown with a lot of details in the inside <laughs> stuff. <Excuse me. laughs> I was trying to stay seriously. I, I feel like I'm not. I feel like... <laughs> I don't feel like you're taking it seriously when we're talking about the Mando news. <laughs> oh my god. Go uh, on. I'm so sorry. Go on. Yeah, no. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Can I have another go at describing what the show is? Can I have another go? Very quickly. Yeah, yeah, please, please. please. That won't help. It won't it's help. It's about yeah, it's about yeah. a man who is very closed off to his own emotions and to what the world expects of him. And a small child enters his life and changes him. For Is the... that the child? That's the child, yeah. For the better. <laughs> and he becomes like a father figure to Grogu. And then he becomes more open and more warm, which you'd think would make him a worse warrior, but somehow it makes him better. And... Yeah. And he... he, he... This, week, wasn't... this week... This week, believe it or not, amazing. Nicole, he lost Grogu. Or they they lost he got Grogu got taken away in a spaceship. Where is he going? He, he, I th thank you for asking. He went away with the bad people. <laughs> oh no! Is he ever going to come back? We don't, we know. don't know. That's the thing. Oh no! And this whole so when episode, is the next Nicole. Episode coming out. Friday night. Oh my god! Then I will have to watch this live stream next week to find out what happened to him. You can just watch the show. It's 28 minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah, we should have I'd done a spoiler watch a alert. I'd rather one and a half hour live stream. But in the whole show, in this whole episode, Nicole, you don't see Grogu. It's the first episode of both seasons yep. where we do not see the child, as he used to be called. Because we only found his name out about two weeks ago. Amazing. That's so exciting. I know, I know. Thank you for getting it involved, is. finally. Oh, that's why everyone always called him Baby Yoda. Correct. Mm. She's Got it. Hooked. She's hooked, Dan. She's hooked. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. So, oh, so where do it. I watch this? On where the telly. Where do I find this? Show? Disney on Plus. Telly. I don't have a telly. Disney Plus you can watch on your laptop. It's like a TV, oh. but it's got like some keys attached to it. <laughs> 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 oh my god okay yeah that's where he's, he's called the guitar geek for a specific reason and we geek uh, out on the mandalorian yeah, it's, it's it's only I slightly the related to the podcast it, i it's think like, it's your favorite segment so far yeah i think that's what everyone is waiting for Do you want to talk about pedals again plus the mando <laughs> news can you show yeah. the intro again Oh, I'm glad you asked. Of course I can. I mean, people have been asking. You know what?
it kind of reminds me of Mando Diao, like their logo. Cool. What? What? <laughs> Do you know the band <laughs> Mando Diao? Nope. Well. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I, I, I slipped. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'm gonna actually... dance with somebody. Dance oh, with yeah. somebody. Dance okay, I know them. Dance. Yeah. Yeah, that band is called Mando Dio, and it kind of, I don't know, it just looks a bit like their logo. Um. Oh, flipping heck. People sending me <laughs> people sending me real world messages. I don't want that. All right. Um, I got sent. Uh, from Poo Ninja, a regular who now will be your regular Nicole, and he'll be invest in, in invited into every chat that you do because that's what he does. He sent me this, which I can't actually get on the screen. It says "Got Milik," and then Darth Vader's got a glass of milk. <laughs> wow, I haven't heard that joke ever in my life, ever. <laughs> he's he's telling in the chat that he put minutes of work into that. Minutes, Nicole. Be slightly more appreciative. I really appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. You're really good at that. You're so good at that. You're evil. Evil. <laughs> You'd be so dark side. I mean, she'd be definitely a Sith. Yeah. yeah, you'd be a Sith. You'd be one of the people taking dark. that away. Yeah, I would take that away, to be honest. Yeah, to be fair, so would I. But. <laughs> We've got one episode left. It's the it's the season finale, right, Dan? On Friday night, or f for us, it's Friday. Oh, night. No. I think so. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And we don't and then know how long is the break going to be. Oh, well, I'm glad you oh, asked because the, there's some months. But Dan has more Star Wars news for you. Dan, well, what okay, news I'm do going you to have? Take away? Well, yeah, go for it. Disney Plus just. Yeah, Disney Plus just announced that we're going to have like 10 new shows within the next five years. So it's more exciting Star Wars content coming. More Woo! series about about characters you've never heard before, like Ahsoka Tano or Cassian Endor. Wow. All the Bad Batch and Rogue Squad. So uh, exciting. Yeah. Actually, here's the thing, Nicole. You know, Disney Plus is a subscription channel. And people are actually paying 60 bucks a year just to watch that one TV show. Because, you know, I don't know, if Andy is sitting in front of his TV watching Ariel, Mermaid, or... Frozen. Know, Be Frozen and Beauty and the Beast, all that stuff. I probably, so. yes. He probably <laughs> does, actually. <laughs> I do not need to watch Frozen, for it is all up here. <laughs> <laughs> let it go. Let it go. It's the soundtrack <laughs> of Andy's life. Yeah. Do you, do you... Back anymore. Oh, this, this I can't see. Him... <laughs> <laughs> Let's Let's stop, I got it. Let me do it. Never bothered me no, anyway. no, no. Nicole never bothered me anyway. <laughs> it's okay, Andy. Oh, this it's has okay. turned into dad humor. Okay. Um. <laughs> Have you got any more questions about the Mandalorian? Me? Yes. So many. <laughs> okay, we just earned two bucks in a super chat from uh, from Mick Hill. Uh, thanks, See Mikhail, what for that. Frozen gets you? Yeah. Um, do you want to build a snowman? Do you want to build a snowman? I've never watched Frozen, to be honest. Oh, for goodness We're sake. We're going to do that. I think I really need to do that this Christmas. I'm going to watch Frozen. All right, that's a route we've taken. <laughs> we've, we've got a Frozen now. Um, frozen news. <laughs> frozen news. <laughs> Nicole's going to be back next week <laughs> with Disney Princess News. <laughs> I'll tune in then. Um. <laughs> We've just got money donated for some frozen content. See? <laughs> We're up see, four more that's bucks. That's what people want to see. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Jack. Jack. Jack, that is, that is too kind and too ridiculous of you. Um. <laughs> Do you want to build a snowman? 
<laughs> What's your favourite Disney film, Nicole? Uh, Lion King, probably. Original or remake? Um, original. Oh, don't. Yeah. Nicole, what? what's going on? It's a big summer blowout. Ah, oh, okay. Um, sorry, Dan. I, I do actually love Frozen. You, you got me on this. Um, you know, that's the thing. You're, you've got so many dark secrets, and this is a super dark secret I didn't know before. So, hardly a secret. I'm learning hardly something a new. Secret. I'm a dad. It's hardly you know? a secret. I'm a dad okay. with, a, with a daughter who thinks, and is quite rightly, a princess. Therefore, you know. Yeah. I think every child, like every. Uh, yeah, probably even every child, probably every girl between the ages of like two and seven thinks that she's either Elsa or Anna. Is that her name? I think so. Anna. Anna. Yeah. Well, it's okay because my son thinks he's a freaking snowman. <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a carrot What's for his a nose. Name again? Olaf. I mean, I don't know. Olaf. I don't know. I don't know what his name is. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Oh goodness! So, Andy, Andy, can you explain to Nicole why we love watching The Mandalorian instead of Frozen? Um, yeah, I can explain why I love it, and I think that Dan and I certainly cross over in this. And it's it's absolute joy for me. It's my half an hour to forty twenty eight minutes to forty five minutes of me time every week, where I'm not thinking about guitar pedals and. I'm just watching some show that I'm completely uh, engrossed in, and it's just, and it's just it takes me away to quite literally a different world that I need, you know. And as much as I love music and I love guitars, I kind of need a break from it because I hate to say it, but I'm surrounded by them all bloody day, <laughs> and they tend to <laughs> they do lose their shine, you know. And that's a horrible thing to say, but it's the same for anything, you know. And it means that when I finish watching The Mandalorian, I feel refreshed and renewed and re-energized and, and full of uh, mitochlorians. <laughs> and that is beautiful. Especially the last part. Yep. Yeah, threw that in there for you, Dan. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just enjoyment. You know, I mean, did you watch TV when you were a kid or anything like that and, and just see silly shows? No. <laughs> I don't agree. Don't believe. No, of course. No, I totally understand that. That's the same for me. I just don't watch The Mandalorian, you know. Yeah, we feel very sorry for that, but um, yeah, occasionally we meet me people. Me too, that to be honest. I'm starting to feel really sorry. Yeah. For <laughs> what um, what's what's your what's your Mandalorian? Um, for like the past three years, probably it's been the middle. Have you ever seen the middle? I love the middle. Oh my god, like we watched it back to back three times. The middle. Yeah. I love the middle. <laughs> yeah, it's it's amazing. Or Nashville. Have you seen Nashville? I watched one episode, it was too glitzy for me. I, I Oh my was... god, it's so good. Yeah, that first episode is so bad, but like the entire TV show. Okay. Watched it three times. Amazing. Um yeah, that's my Mandalorian, I believe. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. Someone mentioned the full guy. I like to the cook chat. and Ian. bake. That's my Mandalorian. You know, oh. cooking, baking. That's where I kind of get my break from guitars. All right. I, yeah. I hear you have a um, a rather good recipe for banana bread. Yeah. I've I've seen that in the chat before. Yes, I've shared it on my Patreon. <laughs> ah. <laughs> it's really good. I've got lots of great recipes, to be honest. But I've only ever shared that banana bread recipe and everyone loves it. So, yeah. All right. So I'm guessing, correct me if I'm wrong, but bananas and some bread and you're onto a winner. Just saved everybody well, a few bucks there. Not exactly. No, I don't believe it. <laughs> don't believe it. <clears throat> uh, all right, guys. I think that it's amazing we've managed to make this podcast yeah. last as long as we have and entertain people. 
<laughs> and I'd I'd be lying I if I didn't say I had a great time. <laughs> and we made ten bucks out of it. <laughs> um before we go, we actually have a sponsor for this episode. And Who is it, um Andy? we have a competition. We've been saying that it's bulldog music stands and music gear. And they, they have these little hangers that go on the wall, and they're quite high-end in the sense that they have uh, felt little things that don't destroy the finish on your beautiful guitar. And when one buys a rather nice instrument, one may wish to display such an instrument on a nice stand or just chuck it on the sofa behind you. Mm -hmm. But if you did want to display it on a nice stand, then bulldog stands are phenomenal. They're beautiful. They're, they're not cheap, and they're rather big. Um, but they're pretty good. Not very good at this advertising thing, am I? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> we're actually um, sponsored by Face Distribution, who distribute these guys and also other stuff uh, in the European islands. And they've given us one to give away, Nicole, believe it or not. Oh, my God. <laughs> and Dan's going to correct me now. No, why should I correct you? Because it's not one that we're giving away, is it? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I totally miss it. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, you're wrong. You're not just oh. giving away one. <laughs> no. This is as good as The Mandalorian. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> we're not giving away two. No, we're not giving okay, away two, many, Dan. How many of these, how many of, of these are give, we're giving away? In total, guys, girls, guitars that also were girls, we're giving away four. <gasps> no way four of these bad boys and three we're going to give away to um like to the winners of the, the the challenge we've set which we'll explain in a moment but one we're going to give away live in the chat in the christmas episode i know i know that's amazing yeah wow i know you want to come back for that but you'll probably be busy watching the mandalorian just catching up so <laughs> How do you win them, I hear you ask, Nicole? Yeah, how, how do you? I'm glad you asked. Every week in December, they've sponsored our show, and we've given away a cold word every episode that has come from the brain of Mr. Daniel Getke. Dr. Daniel Getke. Do you, he's Dr. Dan Boyer. Do you know he's a doctor? Dr. Dan. So <laughs> we gave away, uh, sorry, we gave away the code word two weeks ago. We gave a code word last week. And Dan is about to give another code word today. Okay. And the code word for today is our guest's last name, because that would make for a hilarious solution at the end of the week. So what's our, guest, what's our guest's last name? Wee! I'm part of this. This is Yay. incredible. <laughs> By the way, Nicole, since uh, we've been... We've been uh, Asking that question, like, where can people check and uh, look look after your name? Like, do you have, like, an internet address they can check out or an Instagram well, channel? Well, I've got a YouTube channel, which is um, youtube.com forward slash Nicole Milik is what you actually pronounce my name. But the English people never get it right, so that's okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Andy. No, it's okay. I've heard every single pronunciation of my last name and everything is fine. Milik, Milik, Milic, whatever you want to call it, go for it. And um, my Instagram is at Nicole.Milik. And that is probably like the best way to find me. I'm on Spotify now, so you can go check me out on Spotify Ooh. as well. <laughs> <laughs> check you out. So you've just given away the answer to the, to the quiz this week. Well done. Um, <laughs> If you want to win one of those stands, hangers, sorry, you have to have all four code words. There's one more next week. And I'm just going to add another caveat. You have to go and listen to Nicole's single on some streaming platform of some kind and then throw money at her. Cause, um, we want her back and we want the podcast. It's, it's totally selfish. We want the podcast to be the most listened to podcast in the world, which we're just a few listeners short of. And if Nicole... <laughs> reaches the level at which she should reach, then she'll obviously take us with her. Of course. Awesome. My motivation. And you take me with you, will take me with you when you're like the most listened to podcast on this yeah, planet. Absolutely. Actually, we, we checked the Spotify numbers last week and we, we had like uh, listeners from 33 countries. So it's wow. quite a bit. 
Yeah. That's amazing. But it's a great podcast. Yeah. <laughs> and since absolutely and since my since my grandma's not too good with VPN, I can totally feel that uh, it might actually be true. Yeah. No, I, okay. I actually really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for having me. Like all jokes aside, um, I was really excited. And I'm, I hope that people enjoyed it, even if I know nothing about guitars and stuff. So I really hope that you enjoyed it and you found it somehow entertaining. Thank you guys so much for having me. I had a blast. It was so much fun. <laughs> Honestly, thanks like seriously. Yeah, thanks for your performance. I'm, I'm glad you for... did great conversation yeah yeah thank you a lot of perspective different perspectives from a non-gear geek yeah and great music so i highly recommend checking out your instagram and also your youtube channel the new video is great i watched it too several times so thank you yeah i can highly recommend that and uh yeah hopefully we'll have you on the guitar Stories podcast again in another season That'd be amazing. I'm definitely going to listen to your podcast from now on. And maybe I'm going to learn. I'm, I mean, not maybe. I'm definitely probably going to learn a lot about gear and pedals and the, what is his name again? The Mandalorian and the, something with G. Go, something. Grogu. 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 Yeah. You can just call I mean, him the he child. Is kind of cute. Want. The child. The child. <laughs> Which is finally the what they also call me. Who uh, <laughs> Ninja would like some more Frozen news next week, so maybe you know Nicole could record a little piece for us. We'll play it back. Um, <laughs> the people in the chat, the people that have been watching, thank you ever so much for watching. They are loving Nicole's work and um, loving Nicole generally, so thank you for that, and it's quite rightly earned. And even though we do um, laugh at each other, I do really appreciate your time, Nicole, and I, I love your music, so thank you for joining us. Same to you, Dan. Thank you for your time. And um, I love doing this. That's why we do it. So see you soon next week. And uh, thanks to all the listeners and uh, to all the people in the live stream. See you very soon. Bye-bye. Bye, -bye. Bye everybody. Stories Podcast, your number one show for everything guitar.